Good morning. It's uh, Sunday. I've uh, been getting ready for church. By getting ready for church, of course, I mean I've just been sitting here because the church building is still closed. We are debating, discerning whether and when to reopen the church building. Hopefully sometime soon, but with precautions, of course. And I'm... Uh, going to be doing a, a new a new, a new program actually um, on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is a, a platform for discussions and it's uh, it's only available apparently on iPad and iPhones, Apple products, uh, at least currently. It's got quite trendy as far as I can work out, but some friends uh, are putting together a series of programs on Clubhouse during March. Uh, 7.30 on a Sunday evening, looking at uh, different issues which people are apparently asking. Uh, first one is quite a favourite one uh, for these things, uh, which will be next Sunday, the 7th of March, 7.30 in the evening on Clubhouse. Uh, the programme is called Ask a Pastor. Uh, it's not just me, but I think there's a couple of other pastors as well. Denzel Larby, who's a rapper and a pastor in South London. Uh, I knew him when he was a student at Spurgeon's, great guy, just got married. Uh, so he's going to be speaking as well. And the topic will be, does God like sex? It comes up again and again and again, of course. It's a perennial. Another one of them is apparently there's a whole thing called uh, called um, speaking into existence, which is the idea that with your words, you can speak things into existence usually I think your own material and financial prosperity, but you can speak things into existence. It's kind of bound up with kind of new new age thinking. I think there's a book called The Secret. And you manifest uh, things into being through your own words. Really, it's the um, the old age-old temptation in the, in the Garden of Eden to be like gods. Uh, totally false, totally fictitious. No basis in fact or in God's revelation, the Bible. And we'll be discussing that on another Sunday. So uh, if you do, if you are on Apple products and you want to join Clubhouse, um, apparently it's a really good um, discussion platform for all kinds of things. We'll be doing Ask a Pastor Sundays, 7.30 in the evening uh, for March. But I want to share with you from Numbers 6, verse 24 onwards. And it's sort of related in a way. It's the Aaronic blessing. And we often use this at uh, child dedications in churches, but it's often used as well as a general kind of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. It's a brilliant blessing. And we know that forms of words can be used as magic. Um, not that they work, but um, people treat them as if they do. But also, there is a power in blessing. And I just want to talk about very briefly two, two aspects of it. The first is in terms of God's blessing. And God wants to bless you. Now, that's often taken in a very materialistic sense. Oh, he wants to give me lots of money and a big house in the country. Of course, the ultimate blessing is to be in touch, have a relationship with him and everything that flows from that but the basic orientation of God is to bless you he wants to bless you because we need to be in a position to receive the blessing that's where repentance from sin comes in however just as a challenge to a lot of Christian teaching, often the first Christian teaching will be something like original sin. You're a sinner. You need salvation. But really the thing that comes before that is original blessing. God blesses humanity in Genesis. Yes, humanity falls into sin. We fall into sin. Yes, we need a savior. But God's original intention is to bless. And he wants to bless you. We need to be in the position to re to receive the blessing. That's where repentance for sin, forgiveness for sin, restoration, reconciliation, redemption comes in. 
But don't forget, God is not out to get you. He's out to give to you. God wants your best. He wants the best for you. That's his intention. That's his orientation towards you. But secondly, this is a blessing which <clears throat> the Aaron and his descendants were to pronounce over Israel. And we too can be agents of blessing. Now, I think most people in our society say, oh, God bless you. Oh, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They don't think you're a bit nuts because you don't live in a particularly religious society. So we have to think, how can I bless people? Sometimes by using words, sometimes by using actions. How can I use words to bless people? By wishing them well. I don't mean I wish you well, but being positive about their lives, being positive about the prospects of their lives, realistic about the obstacles, but actually favoring them and hoping for and working for their benefit, their blessing. That's where the actions come in. What can I do that will bless somebody? Bless means to be happy. What can I do for somebody? Maybe something very simple. Buying some, if I'm going to the coffee shop, buying a coffee for them when I pop out of the office. Assuming we will ever work in offices again. But what can I do for my next door neighbour? Sue made some cake the other day and uh, took it round to our neighbour who's practically housebound. She's an older lady. Nice neighbour. And um, just took her a piece of cake. And in her isolation and loneliness, her family are very good. They, they go around nearly every day. But, of course, for vast amounts of the day, she is on her own. And so this is a blessing to her to know that a neighbour cares about her. How can we speak blessing? How can we bring blessing to other people? And how can we receive the blessing that God wants to give us? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are a blessing God. And we pray that you'll help us to put ourselves in the position to receive your blessing. We choose to repent of sin and everything that gets in the way of your blessing. In particular, Lord God, we thank you for the blessing of eternal life, won for us on the cross by Jesus. And we pray that you'll fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be agents of your blessing to other people in words and actions. Amen. Amen. So please remember um, our new program on uh, Clubhouse, uh, discussing different questions of contemporary relevance and interest. And also on Saturday, the 6th, this coming Saturday, there will be a women's conference at KCBC online, of course. You'll find the details to click into that on our social media. That will be Saturday afternoon. Adriana Anderson from our partner church in um, Birmingham, Alabama, will be speaking. That'll be a great occasion. I'm very jealous uh, that I won't be able to be there because I'm not a lady. Uh, but she is a great preacher and a great speaker of God's word. So uh, if you are. If you do qualify for the Women's Conference, uh, join in and enjoy it and be blessed. God bless you. God be with you. And he is always, 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 always with you.